More weather and traffic coming up, but the Spurs Warrior road trip is officially on hold. The NBA postponed tonight's game against the Pistons because a member of the Spurs tested positive for COVID-19. The positive test and contact tracing that followed left San Antonio without the league required eight available players to play a game. It's the second Spurs game to be postponed this season and the 25th in the NBA overall. The Spurs are currently scheduled to play a game against the Cleveland Cavaliers at 7 o'clock. Uh, I believe that would be tomorrow night. But we will see if more games are postponed. Right now it's 425, running about 15 degrees. And taking a look outside with TransGuide this morning. Uh, again, the major highways are closed. Here's a look at Loop 410 and Marbuck Road and I-10 and Callahan. Again, be careful if you have to head out, but major highways are closed. We're going to check in with Samuel King later. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Bitter cold temperatures in place again this morning. We've got more wintry weather on the way. We'll get you updated coming up. And those dangerous temperatures leading to dangerous conditions on the roads. The latest on the highway conditions coming up. Hey, good morning, everybody. We've made it to Tuesday. It is February 16th. It has been an eventful couple of days here, and the weather is just uh, what we've never seen before. So let's go ahead and check back with Justin about, oh my goodness, we're at 15 degrees right now. I think actually we're doing school closures here. We have some of the mini school closures experiencing changes today. Classes canceled today for Arc of San Antonio, Bandera ISD, Blanco ISD, and Bernie ISD. Northside, biggest district in town, also canceling both in-person and remote learning today. To find a full list of school closures as well as business closures, go to ksat.com. And the power problems that many are experiencing are also impacting the San Antonio water system. In a statement, SAW says the outages are impacting some of its pump stations and how quickly they refill. Some customers may experience low water pressure as a result. SAW also says frozen pipes are leading to many residents having power outage, water outages. Excuse me. To troubleshoot the issue, they suggest leaving cabinet doors open under sinks to allow warmer air to circulate. Also allow faucets to drip in various areas of the home to keep water moving. Well, Justin is here with more on what to expect today, and there is still no warm up in our forecast. We are settling in for the deep freeze for days to come. Yeah, yesterday we did not get above freezing. The sun came out, though, and that helped melt some of that snow, but now that's ice on the roadways. So that's problem number one. We're expecting more freezing rain tonight, uh, unbelievably. So that's going to add insult to injury. Uh, you know, the good in all this, kiddos were able to build some snowmen yesterday. We got a ton of pictures of that. We love to see that. This is a great example here of the snow that was there. Now, most of this snow, again, or at least some of it melted, and uh, now we're dealing with very bitter cold temperatures again. 14 degrees at the airport, 18 at Port SA, 14 Las Maples, 9 at Kerrville. We were a little bit colder earlier. We're going to, I think, hover somewhere around 12 to 14 degrees this morning. Wind chill values, it's five. That's what it feels like outside. The wind's not all that strong, but the wind chill was still very dangerous. We still have wind chill warnings in place. Uh, if you're gonna be outside for any extended amount of time, uh, you, you gotta bundle up because this is brutal cold. Uh, winter storm warnings still in effect. And yes, we have more winter weather on the way. It really is kind of hard to fathom, but as we get into tonight, freezing drizzle is going to come back into play. It's just gonna make roads worse. As far as temperatures go today, we will warm up into the 20s, and I use warm up in quotes because we may only get to right about freezing 32, 33 for a high. The average high today is 67. Put it into some historical perspective, so we are way, way below average. We're going to talk more about that potential for some freezing drizzle tonight. We have another chance of some wintry mix Thursday. That forecast is coming up, but let's get over to Samuel King to talk about the conditions of those roads. Uh, hi, Justin. Uh, we were taking, going to take another look there at the situation at I-10 and Callahan, but we lost that camera briefly, but we see some emergency uh, vehicles heading by at 410 in San Pedro, and we've been seeing that uh, throughout uh, uh, the morning here. Again, the highways are closed, even though there might not be a law enforcement person there.
physically blocking uh, the way for you, you should consider that highway closed. But we have been seeing people out and about this morning. But again, some pretty dangerous conditions. If anything you see on this map, any indicator uh, indicates either a closure or, or slippery conditions. Uh, and this isn't doesn't even telling you what's going on. I want to mention out uh, friends out in the hill country. This is also an issue here. They've been dealing with the ice and snow longer than uh, we have here in San Antonio. But you can also see here a number uh, of closures in the hill country as well. Travel not advised anywhere across South Texas this morning. And here's a look at some of the reminders. If you are an essential worker and you have to venture out or and we know people without power and maybe their friends have had power or family members and they need to head over there. Just be careful. Even if the roads are fine, you might get stuck behind an accident. Uh, so you want to have ways to keep yourself warm in the car in case you uh, have to turn off your car. Uh, blankets and sleeping bags. Make sure your cell phone's charged. Hopefully you can get gas at a place where there is power. Uh, have snacks and water in the vehicle. And if you're stranded on an interstate, this is the state hotline 1-800-525-5555. And here again is a uh, 410 at San Pedro. Stay off the roads if, if you can. A lot of businesses have closed too. So that's a good thing so people can uh, stay at home if they can. But guys, we'll have more on the roads coming up in a minute. Thank you, Samuel. We still have no update yet on that late breaking news from the north side of town. We do want to tell you again that crews are trying to put out a two alarm blaze. This video coming into our newsroom just a short time ago. It's all happening at 1200 block of Patricia. At last check, there were upwards of 27 fire units on the scene and they were having water pressure problems. We have a crew headed that way, but I'm assuming that it's taking a while to get there because the roads are just really bad still this morning. We are going to try to provide updates as soon as humanly and safely possible. Another overnight fire destroys a home in north the northeast side this morning. It happened in the 5700 block of Spring Sunshine. That's near Nacogdoches and Judson Roads. Our Stephen Cavazos is live there now. And Stephen, how how long did it take crews to put out these flames? Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, it has been an all nighter for these guys out here. They say the weather made it very challenging not only to put this fire out, but also just to get to this fire. Now, if you take a look right behind me, this is that damage that has been left over from that fire. Now, they said that, of course, weather made it very difficult to, to get here, but obviously it was very challenging to put out this fire. It's been completely destroyed. Now, information is still limited at this hour, but one of the firefighters I just spoke to says the estimated damage is possibly over $200,000 now. Thankfully, there was no one inside at any point that any of these homes here have to be evacuated. If you take a closer look on the second story, that is where it looks like most of the damage was done uh, because of this fire. Now, the cause is still under investigation this morning, but you can see these guys are wrapping up as well. But we also wanted to point out these are the conditions that they're having to work in right now. This is ice that is out on the road, so that's making it very difficult for these firefighters not only to get to where they need to be, but also just to work at those locations in general. So, of course, you want to keep that in mind if you plan to, for whatever reason, head out on the roadways. But nonetheless, uh, we will be working to get some more information on this particular fire as that becomes available. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Hundreds of thousands of San Antonio residents waking up without power again this morning. Most of the city experiencing those rotating power outages. And CPS says this will continue until those freezing temperatures let up. Our Sarah Costa is joining us live in the studio right now for the latest. Good morning. Good morning. I think all of us have experienced a little bit of this and uh, most of our viewing areas too. roughly two thirds of CPS energy grids will continue to have those rotating outages for the next 24 to 48 hours due to an unprecedented demand amid below freezing conditions. Those conditions causing equipment failure. CPS energy says those issues are expected to persist for the next couple of days. Now let's just take a look at the latest numbers. 241 active outages, 294,208 customers. That number has since gone up in the last half hour. A total number of customers who have been served 866,160 so those outage numbers also include those being impacted by the rotating outages. CPS Energy President and CEO Paula Gold Williams said the goal is to try and rotate those outages in 15 minute increments. But with high demand combined with the reduced ability to generate power due to the freeze, she acknowledged that results have not been consistent. Some customers have reported longer outages with power coming back only for a few minutes at a time. Here's what we can do at home. 
home, set your thermostats to 68 degrees or lower. Turn off and unplug any unused, unnecessary appliances. Keep your blinds and windows closed at night to keep the heat in. And it's not just our viewing area experiencing these outages. Just take a look at this map. This map shows how the state is being affected by freezing temperatures, causing power loss. Areas in blue not having outages, but 30% of the counties in orange don't have power, which includes Bear County. Now, if you take a look at those counties in red, for example, like Kerr County, that is nearly at 100% without power. That just gives you the bigger picture here, what we're dealing with across the state. And the company says they're continuing to bring systems up, make those repairs and keeping customers informed on social media forums, emails and phone calls. Of course, you can find all this information on KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie. All right, very frustrating situation, Sarah. Thank you. A lot of folks are just simply out of patience. We have questions, of course, for city county leaders and CPS when we can get them on the line, and we will let you know when that happens. 438, 15 degrees. And let's take a look at that 15 degrees outside with live cam. Again, a shot of the city. Can't see much. Uh, just a little... Uh, murky out there, but definitely the roadways is still icy, not good for driving conditions. Be careful out there, but all the major highways are closed. We will be right back. Now back to that late breaking news on the north side of town. San Antonio fire crews braving bitter cold trying to put out a two alarm apartment fire. This is happening in the 1200 block of Patricia Drive. Our Katrina Weber is live there now with the latest. How do I join this? Is it Katrina, go ahead. I think that's it. I don't hear it though. Katrina, if you can hear us, go ahead. Okay, you can see the street sign right there. Stand by, stand a, by. We can hear Katrina, but uh, earlier oh, there was a I, shot of Patricia Drive. Everybody hang on one second. Katrina, can you hear us at all right now? We've had some technical issues and I know we've had trouble with audio. If you can hear us at all, go, please go ahead. Okay, apparently not. Right. We'll try well, good to. Good morning. Uh, we're at the scene of this apartment fire, a two alarm fire here at this apartment building, the 1200 block of Patricia. Now, firefighters are busy and in the thick of it, so we haven't had a chance to get any official information. I did talk to a man who says his father was evacuated from uh, his apartment here at the Tuscany Apartments. Again, the 1200 block of Patricia. You can see that they have two aerial trucks two ladder trucks extended when we first drove up they had water pouring out of both of those hoses down onto the building uh, the man who i spoke to said that uh, it appeared to be on the back side of the building but again we have not been able to talk to firefighters to get any official information don't know about any injuries but definitely some evacuations here as firefighters uh, work on what appears to be a very large fire. We did hear talk in the beginning that there were flames shooting through the roof. I believe you may have seen some of those flames uh, coming through as well. But we're going to try to get with the firefighters to get uh, the official word on how this started and exactly what the extent of the damage is here. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you very much. I'm glad we were get to that report. Yeah, right before we started a newscast this morning, I was hearing firefighters out there saying, hey, I need more water pressure out here. So the weather is causing a variety of problems for yes. first responders. Yeah, issues for those crews out there as well mm -hmm. as uh, the fire that Stephen responded to as well. Yeah, that's right. 443, 15 degrees. And as we head to break, let's take a look at the CPS energy outage map. And right now we are looking about at 282, 955,000 customers affected. And here are the schools or more schools impacted by the weather. We have the full list of districts and their plans as well as businesses that are closed on KSAT.com. 446, we're going to talk weather in just a moment. And there's lots to talk about because uh, it looks like we're not going to warm up at all till maybe Friday. No, and the roads major uh, problems right now because all the highways are closed. And I know we had that situation out there, I-10 Callahan, where nobody's moving right now, Samuel. Yeah, we had a bunch of 18 wheelers pulled over and we showed you this view earlier and you could kind of see it. But uh, in, a, in, in a few minutes ago, we, we were going to show this, but it looked like a camera was out. I, I think the power's out. Uh, in this area, it definitely looks like it uh, to me, uh, which is, makes it even more dangerous as, as you see a car uh, pass uh, by there. So you kind of kind of weird to see that in the middle of the city. And I say that uh, because 
uh, this is I-10 at Medical, not too far away, and you see all the street lights mm -hmm. uh, Oh, and that's stuff. true. It's just that stretch of, just of that, I-10. Just that area right there. And it's on the edge of the yeah. medical center. I know right. that CPS Energy is trying hard to keep the hospitals up and running mm -hmm. power-wise for obvious reasons. So this is right there on the edge. But yeah, that's a big change from just minutes ago. Right, and just underscores the danger that uh, of this uh, because we have the power outages. There's a lot of traffic signals out in the city. You have the icy roads. Uh, so this is another reason if you really don't have to be out right now, maybe stay where you are until at least sunlight so you can actually see uh, uh, something because uh, you don't want to run into this uh, on a highway, especially when we have uh, vehicles uh, like this uh, pulled over. Uh, so uh, guys, I'll send it back uh, over to you, but uh, just, to, just to underscore this, uh, when you see this sort of uh, a danger uh, there, this is uh, something definitely that uh, you want to uh, want to uh, be careful about and you don't want to deal with there. No, very dangerous situation. Thank you, Samuel. All right, Justin, where do you begin, sir? Well, we're going to start with these temperatures. And, you know, I, I, it, so many people are without power. We know some people have been without power for extended amount of times, extended amount of time, and, and the temperature is just so bitterly cold this morning. I, I want to give you some perspective, though. Our average height temperature is 67. Normally in February, we start to see the average height temperature climb. And by the end of February, we're typically averaging around 70 degrees. So it is amazing to think about that we've been in the teens and 20s. I mean, records are just falling left and right here. And this morning, no exception. 13 right now. That is another record low here in San Antonio. 18 right now in Port SA. 10 Bernie stage. I know, again, many people are without power, and this is just makes it so much worse. If you're up in Kerr County, a lot of people just lost power completely, and this is starting to get uh, in it's dangerous territory if it hasn't already with these numbers the way they are. Wind chill values are even worse because there is a little bit of a breeze out there. So this is what it feels like five here in San Antonio, 11 in Kerrville, nine in Hondo. As we go outside for you, Samuel alluded to the other big issue that we're having this morning is the fact that there is black ice out there. There is ice on the roadways. All that snow yesterday melted because the South Texas sun. Yeah, we didn't get above freezing, but the South Texas sun melted it all, turned to slush and water, and now it is ice. 13 at the airport, 18 at Kelly. Uh, tenant Randolph, and we're seeing some of these places not reporting because ice is becoming a problem. Uh, it's causing the reporting sites to malfunction. But as we look at the temperatures today, 22 by 10 o'clock, 26 noon time, we're up around 32, 33, I think, this afternoon. So maybe briefly above freezing, but not for very long. And then as we get into tonight, we're going to have more problems. Here's why. Notice most of, of Texas is quiet right now. But as we look off to the north and west, there is more energy, unbelievably, starting to work in. We're still within this Arctic dome of cold air. And as we look at the forecast, things are going to be quiet uh, this afternoon. This is 6 o'clock. But watch what happens around 10 o'clock. We start to see precipitation developing. I know this shows the blue color. And yeah, there could be a little bit of snow up in the hill country, but I think it's mostly going to be in the form of freezing rain. We have below freezing temperatures at the surface, but upstairs, just a little bit upstairs, there is warmer air. So what happens is you get freezing rain, freezing drizzle, and that's the worst kind of precipitation we could ask for because that just adds to the ice potential. And I think we're going to see some accumulations, especially I-10, I'm sorry, I-35 and east. There could be some accumulations up to a tenth of an inch. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a huge problem. Uh, and it will be very slick tomorrow morning again because we have this freezing drizzle. Wednesday, we get a break in the action. I think we get above freezing, but watch what happens Wednesday night into Thursday. Here we go again. This is the last piece of energy, but it could produce another wintry mix. This go around, it would be some freezing rain and maybe some snow. You know, what can we say uh, to get several storm systems where we're having wintry weather in South Texas just unheard of. We're in uncharted territory here, but it is uh, it is going to happen again. Winter weather alerts. We still have winter storm warnings in effect because of all this. So travel is still going to be a problem through basically the end of the week. As we get into Friday, even Thursday afternoon, we do get above freezing. So there's the good news there. 50 on Friday. The numbers this weekend look pretty good and we may see another chance of rain Monday morning. But what we're going to worry about is the short term forecast. 60 percent chance of freezing drizzle tonight. Be careful. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what closures will look like tomorrow morning, but that is uh, that could be a problem. 
uh, with the numbers the way they are, 28 is what we're expecting tomorrow morning, guys. Thank you very much, Justin. 451, we're still at 15 degrees. And still ahead, a look at what's next as much of the nation tries to warm up after days of constant cold temperatures. All right, let's see if we've got your lottery numbers here. And they are, we do have them. Pick three, 741, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 7436, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 9, 16, 21, 23, 33, and your Texas two-step. 11, 18, 26, 30, bonus ball 35. Well, Justin's already been hinting at this as the deadly winter storm that's paralyzed much of Texas and the central U.S. moves east. Another storm is brewing just behind it. The severe weather has sparked emergency declarations in at least seven states. CNN's Mary Maloney reports. All across the U.S., people digging out from under the snow. This is a lot. <laughs> as another storm prepares to move in. Uh, how we respond over the next 48 to 72 hours is critical. The winter wallop will be yet another cross-country storm. What we're facing is three winter storms in seven days. It's expected to hit areas already inundated with snow and ice, like in Texas, where more than three and a half million people were stuck in homes without power in sub-freezing temperatures. There's a, there's a huge demand, a very limited supply. It is a system-wide uh, failure across, across the state. In Kansas, the governor is asking people to conserve energy. And I can't stress this point enough. We all must cut back on natural gas and electricity usage now to ensure we have enough available to make it through these sub-zero temperatures. The snow temporarily halting air traffic at major airports in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, and creating deadly road conditions. And I'm simply going to ask us to just to kind of hunker down. The storm also causing concerns over the COVID vaccine rollout, as some states impacted halt vaccination events and others prepare for delivery delays. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. And just two hours ago, I saw an alert staff here at search and rescue teams heading to Brunswick County, North Carolina to help find missing people after a tornado ripped through there very early this morning. Oh so goodness. it's not just the winter weather, the they're snow and the with, ice. They're dealing with this uh, tornado as well. Yes, absolutely. 456, 15 degrees. And taking a look at the roadway via Trans Guide. Let's look at there. There's that situation we were looking at at I-10 to Callahan. Of course, uh, those 18 wheelers are not going anywhere. All of the highways are closed right now. And in fact, the power looks like it's out and that stretch of I-10. A lot to cover with Samuel King coming up after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Record cold temperatures again this morning. We have fallen down into the teens and we have more winter weather on the way. Believe it or not, some freezing rain, freezing drizzle tonight. We have the absolute latest coming up. And we're definitely dealing with some icy roads this morning and some dark spots because of the power outages. The latest on highway conditions coming up. And a good morning to you folks. It is Tuesday. It is February 16th. Situation remains quite dire this morning. Uh, we've still got a bunch of power outages. It's it stayed consistently above 200,000 all night long. And for a lot of folks, these rolling power outages have been anything but they have been pretty consistent. Yeah, a lot of people dealing with that in their homes and also the schools are having to make adjustments. Let's look, take a look at some of those closures right now. Pearsall ISD and Pleasanton ISD are to, saying that staff and students are off today. San Antonio ISD says all schools will be closed today and there will not be remote instruction, both in person and virtual learning also canceled for South San ISD, South Side ISD and Southwest ISD. The districts will continue to provide updates as they become available. We're going to have a full list of closures on our website at KSAT.com. Well, what started out as a winter wonderland has become a very dangerous situation that is uh, showing no signs of improvement anytime soon. Oof, records yesterday, guys, record lows. We're setting records again this morning. We've already surpassed the record. We're down to uh, 13 uh, last hour here in San Antonio. And uh, we've got mostly clear skies. So temperatures are going to be chilly, very bitter cold this morning. And then some wind chill values now down close to zero yet again. Let's look at the numbers. 13 in San Antonio. 10 over there at Randolph, 14 Canyon Lake, 11 in Kerrville. And by the way, we've heard lots of reports of 
frozen pipes, we're right back there again, again today with these numbers. Uh, and, and so it's, it's only going to get worse. You may lose water. And then it's not until things thaw out that we find out if pipes burst or not, which is a whole nother issue within itself. But we're not there yet because temperatures today will barely, barely get above freezing. Look at the windshield right now. Five, that's what it feels like here in town. Eleven in Kerrville. Sixteen, your feels like temperature in Rock Springs. There is still ice on the ground and uh, still ice, a ton of ice up across the hill country. We're not done, unfortunately. So winter storm warnings are now in effect yet again because we're going to see freezing rain, freezing drizzle tonight overnight hours when it's below freezing. So we're going to add to the ice totals and they've sort of realigned this a little bit. Winter storm warnings, basically San Antonio, Pleasanton, Kerrville East, and then you've got winter weather advisories to the west. What does that mean? Well, lower accumulations of ice out west, but here in San Antonio, especially I-35 East, we could be talking about a tenth of an inch of ice, which is a huge, huge problem as we get into tonight and tomorrow morning. So yes, we are not done, but in the meantime, we will see some Partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will struggle, struggle to get to that freezing mark. 32 with easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We're going to dig deeper into these chances for precipitation. There's another one Thursday morning, but first we got to talk about roads. There is a ton of ice out there, Samuel. Uh, yes, uh, and even uh, if the roads look uh, slick, because we did have a lot of melting yesterday, maybe look just wet, I should say, uh, they are pretty slick, and with the temperatures in the teens like they are, uh, that definitely means there are there's some ice on the roads. Uh, this is I-10 and Callahan. Uh, you can definitely uh, see these 18-wheelers here uh, pulled over. It seems like this area might be affected by some of the, of the rolling uh, outages. Uh, we had another camera view, and it just went dark <laughs> before we were going to take it here on air. So. Uh, that's something else to watch out for. And also let's uh, here look at the map. This is a closer look at that area. And probably what you're seeing here is uh, this, the 18 wheelers pulled over. That's why it's orange. And you also have uh, 410. I know it kind of looks deceiving here because you're seeing green, um, but it's nece not necessarily in our system that the road is closed. Uh, but uh, in theory, it is open and we've actually seen people on the roads, but you should not be on the roads. They are considered closed and taking a wider uh, look of the area. Several uh, closure slippery conditions here. This is a closure slippery conditions and a closure here at uh, 410 and 90. And so let's uh, go here to our winter driving tips. Once again, drive to conditions, not the speed limit. Uh, avoid sudden movements. If you slide, do not get out of your vehicle if you're in an icy uh, bridge or overpass. Uh, these are definitely important because again, we don't have the snow. The roads were not great yesterday. We're better during the day. But we have ice this morning like we did this weekend, and we saw a lot of crashes this weekend. So stay home if you can. Guys, we'll have more on the traffic situation coming up. Thank you, Samuel. Now back to that two alarm apartment fire on San Antonio's north side. It's happening in the 1200 block of Patricia Drive. Our Katrina Weber is live there now with the latest. Well, good morning. Uh, we have been able to talk to firefighters just in the last few minutes and get a little bit of more information. Now, this is an apartment fire that broke out probably about an hour ago here in the 1200 block of Patricia. Firefighters say that they had flames shooting through the roof. They say that there are four units that have damage from the fire and then others in the building. They were not able to give me an exact number, but others in the building do have water and smoke damage. Uh, they have evacuated obviously everyone in that building as well as the building behind it because again those flames were shooting through the roof they had to attack the fire from above they had two ladder trucks uh, extended when we got here with water pouring down on the building uh, they did keep it from spreading beyond this one building but again everyone in the building behind it was evacuated as a precaution all of those people are apparently in the clubhouse of this apartment complex now uh, just to get out of the cold as firefighters continue their work, making sure that this fire is out. Uh, they tell me it is too early to figure out what caused this. But again, we did see people, some of them huddled in blankets, some in wheelchairs being uh, escorted down the street toward the clubhouse where they will wait for further word and in the meantime, get out of the cold. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
The other really big story this morning is those power outages. At one point overnight, more than 300,000 CPS Energy customers did not have power. Our Sarah Costa is live in the studio this morning with the latest from CPS and that outage map. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Definitely a frustrating situation. I think everyone has been impacted by this. San Antonio CPS Energy customers say they're worried about the elderly and sick neighbors who are without power during the ongoing rotating outages happening across the state. CPS Energy says the energy demand has been up to four times higher than expected. Some systems have been impacted by the high demand and others by equipment failure due to the cold temperatures. Here's the latest outage map from CPS Energy. Right now, 253 active outages and that number going up in the last half hour, 302,156 total customers affected. Now that does include those who are being impacted by the rotating outages as well. CPS Energy President and CEO Paula Gold Williams said the goal is try is to try to rotate outages in 15 minute increments, but with high demand combined with the reduced ability to generate power due to the freeze, she acknowledged that results have not been consistent. Some customers have reported longer outages during those rotating outages with power only coming back for a few minutes at a time. Now here's what we can do at home to do. Everyone needs to do their part. You can set your ther thermostats 68 degrees or lower. Turn off and unplug any unused or unnecessary appliances. Keep your blinds and windows closed at night to keep the heat in. Now the company says they're continuing to bring systems up, make repairs and keeping customers informed on social media forums, emails and phone calls. And of course you can find all of that on KSAT.com. But CPS warns make plans because it's not over yet. Mark and Stephanie. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. And we've been reading the comments uh, about uh, CPS Energy and these rolling power. People are frustrated. They are upset and we, we get it. We're going to try to get some answers for you as soon as possible. That's right. A lot of those outages lasting more than 30 minutes, sometimes all day. Oh, yeah. For a lot of folks, it wasn't rolling at all. It was just out and it is cold. Very, very cold. 509, 15 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Like Mark said, 15 degrees, a shot of San Antonio. They're pretty bl blurry, but you can see all the major highways are still closed. Uh, Samuel King brought up a point. Even if you don't see a roadblock there, just know the highways are closed this morning. Do not attempt to go on them. We'll be right back. Today, the San Antonio Food Bank is suspending operations because of the winter weather. That includes food distributions. However, they plan to keep their community kitchen at Haven for Hope open. The organization CEO says they're renting generators in order to help keep the facility up and running. If power goes off here, <coughs> uh, it's a disaster. And so we, uh, we know power's going off. Power's off at my house right now, uh, not here. Wilson says a few dozen people were brought into shelter ahead of the cold weather. About 100 volunteers were made, able to make it to Haven to help out. And right now on KSET.com, we have a look at the latest list of school schedules, which have changed because of the snow and ice. We're also tracking business closures and delays and any updates on those power outages. You can also get the updates on your phone by downloading our KSET TV app. And if you're still having power issues, we hope you can stream us on the KSAT app. It's at the top of the screen. 513, 15 degrees. And as we go to break, a lot of flights impacted at the San Antonio International Airport, the city of San Antonio, via Facebook reporting that all flights have been canceled for today. You can contact your airline for more information. Did you know the source of odor in your home could be all your soft surfaces? Odors get trapped in your home's fabrics and resurface over time. Febreze Fabric Refresher eliminates odors. Its water-based formula safely penetrates fabrics where odors hide. Spray it on your rugs, your curtains, your furniture, all over your home to make it part of your tidying up routine. Febreze Fabric Refresher for an all-over freshness you'll love. For pain relief, don't just block the pain with ordinary patches and creams. Help heal the pain with Thermacare. Real therapeutic heat increases blood flow to help accelerate healing. So you not only feel better, you get better. Thermacare. Real heat, real healing. 
Update your space with Macy's President's Day Furniture and Mattress Specials, like the Radley Shea Sectional for $1,879 and the Monroe Queen Bed, now $279. Plus, get a free adjustable base or box spring with qualifying purchase, now at Macy's. Welcome back. It is 517. Keeping an eye on the situation on the roads, this is uh, 410 at Evers, and we see some uh, law enforcement activity or textile activity uh, trying to block the roads there. You can kind of see some icing, and this vehicle here has been here uh, this morning. We've been uh, keeping an eye on it, and it hasn't moved since about 4 o'clock. Uh, so that gives you an uh, indication of just the conditions there. Remember, all of the highways should be uh, considered uh, closed. And I believe this is a, a tech dot or law enforcement vehicle there uh, moving. Just uh, reiterating that all of the major highways in the region should be considered closed. Let's take a look here. This is uh, I-10 at Callahan, and we've been showing you this. It, it got dark here uh, within the past uh, hour, uh, half hour, 45 minutes or so, but you see these 18 wheelers uh, pulled over. We have again seen people on the interstates this morning, but again, they are considered closed even if they're not physically blocked. And this is the area here, I-10 and 410, uh, just one of the areas that are dealing with this. And let's take a wider look at the map. Any uh, indicator you see here indicates a closure or slippery conditions. And it is not just the highways that are dealing with this. Our Stephen Cavazos was trying to make his way uh, around, uh, away from that breaking news scene earlier. He joins us live now. And, and Stephen, I understand you encountered some road closures today. Hey, good morning, Samuel. Yes, definitely encountered some road closures on our way to the airport, which we just arrived to right now. And, you know, we're just going to want to drive around the area to show you what we are seeing right now. If you recall yesterday, this area right in front of us was snowed over. But if you take a closer look, that snow has now been iced over, obviously making it more dangerous to be out on the roadways. But we have been taking an extra slow this morning. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, Samuel, we did encounter some several road closures, or several road closures, that is, and had to take alternative routes due to major highways being closed. Now, obviously, of course, sometimes this doesn't appear to be as bad if you don't see this ice, but that doesn't mean it, it I mean, looks can be deceiving. And I don't think there's any way, better way to say it. You're going to want to, you know, use caution when you take a look on the uh, take a look take out head out on the roadways if you absolutely must head out on the roads but keep in mind uh, it didn't doesn't take much ice to really lose control when you're out here driving and again we are in a four by four just to give you some context taking it about maybe 20 25 mile per 25 miles per hour that is but uh, very dangerous conditions to be out on the roadways. We just came here to talk about obviously some of the delays, uh, cancellations that people are still experiencing because of this weather. But of course we did have to take our time out here and we're just gonna park up here and get ready to do a live shot coming up in the next uh, few minutes here on GMSA. But for now, we're gonna send it back over to you, Mark and Steph. Steven, thank you. I'll take it from here. And, and we were just talking about those road temperatures. Uh, we have temperatures well below freezing. This, this sort of blows my mind here. These, this is a look at the road temperatures. We have a product here on our radar that we can look at road temperatures. And I know it's kind of hard to see there, but roads are measuring like 16, 18 degrees. That's it. There are roads below freezing all the way down to Corpus. So every single road across the area likely freezing. There is likely ice on it no matter where you go, even the surface streets now. So be careful. We've said it over and over, but that's the situation. Temperature-wise, 17 Port SA, 12 Bernie Stage, 12 Kenyon Lake, 11 right now in Kerrville. These are the air temperatures. Uh, a little bit warmer, in, warmer in quotes, than it was yesterday, but it's still just bitter cold. Uh, 12 in Junction, 18 in Rock Springs. You look at the wind chill, we're down to about 5. That's what it feels like. The wind is not that strong, but there is still a wind chill nonetheless, and it is in dangerous territory. Outside. 13 at the airport, as we mentioned, we're at 17 Kelly, 10 at Randolph, and the winds generally below 5 miles per hour. Forecast for today, I think we do get into the 20s by lunchtime, probably mid-morning, and then up to around 32, 33 this afternoon. So we will may, uh, maybe jump above freezing for a time. The sun will be out, so that's going to help to melt some things. But it refreezes again tonight. And we have another piece of energy headed in our direction. So as you look at the big picture here, this is a storm system that moved through yesterday, by the way, and this is producing a ton of wintry weather for the Northeast. But we've got more energy moving in from the West. This is going to help produce freezing drizzle, freezing rain tonight. Take a look at the forecast. Mostly clear today, partly cloudy, so this is 6 o'clock. But clouds increase tonight. This model shows 
a mixture of maybe some snow and freezing rain. I think it's probably more freezing rain uh, here across San Antonio. And then it really starts to kick in midnight. And there could be some ice accumulation, especially San Antonio points off to the east. Uh, tree limbs could collect some ice. Roads are just going to get worse. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to imagine they could get any worse, but I think it's possible. And then as we get into tomorrow, things quiet down. I do think we get above freezing for sure tomorrow. And then by Thursday, here we go again. Another piece of energy. This produces some wintry mix around the area into Thursday morning. After this, we are finally done. Thank goodness. Winter storm warnings are back in effect. Now, they've stayed in effect, but we're sort of reissuing them here. Include San Antonio for that chance of freezing rain tonight. Extended forecast. We're going to go uh, 33 today, but 48 coming up tomorrow. 60% chance of freezing drizzle overnight. 40% chance of a wintry mix Thursday morning. And then from there, we should really start to warm up. Friday's probably going to be our best day to get rid of all of this. And then 60s this weekend. You know, the other side to this, guys, we mentioned this earlier. These temperatures well below freezing. People's power is out. That means pipes are going to go. There's going to be frozen pipes all over the area. And when we start to thaw, hopefully we don't get a lot of busted pipes. But that's, that's going to be an issue. Yeah, I like how you put it earlier. We truly are in uncharted territory here. I mean, this is going to take days or weeks to not only tell the stories, but to recover from. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. already a lot of water on the roadways traveling yesterday just from busted pipes and, well, melted snow stone, but sure. pipes already busting. Yes. Yep. Thank you. 523, 15 degrees. And as we head to break, let's take a look at the latest CPS energy outage map. Right now we are looking at about 307,016 customers affected by these outages. And welcome back. It's 526. The weather conditions this morning causing more travel issues at the San Antonio International Airport. Yeah, city announced that uh, all flights have been canceled for today. If you had a flight scheduled, you're asked to contact the airline. In coming days, you can monitor your flight status by visiting Fly San Antonio Dot com, but this is going to have a ripple effect for days and days to come. Right now it's 526, 15 degrees. Let's take a look outside the trans guys. Let's look at I-10 and Callahan. Of course, we have those 18 wheelers who are just kind of parked there at the side of I-10. The power seems to be out in that area. A reminder that all the major highways are closed right now. We're going to check in with Samuel King after the break. Hey, good morning. Welcome back. It's about 530 now on Tuesday, February 16th. This unprecedented winter weather continues. It's affecting everything and power outages continue in mass this morning. More to come on all of that. First up, schools are closed this morning. Most of them north side, northeast San Antonio and south side ISD will not hold class in person or even remotely today. Pre-K for SA will hold remote classes, but food distributions are postponed until further notice. If you have any questions about a specific district, please be sure to check your email or your, the school website. We also have a list of closures on our website at kset.com, and you can see a scrolling list of closures on the bottom of your screen throughout GMSA. And we hope you can access that information. We know a lot of folks are without power or have been now, and your phone's now may be dead. Let's go to just to get an update on how bad the situation is kind of going from bad to worse in the next 24 hours. It is. It's we're kind of running out of descriptors here to just uh, talk about this situation. Uh, bitter cold this morning. Those without power. I, I know I know it's cold in your house. I mean, this is getting to a dangerous level here. 12 Bernie stage. It's 12 Canyon Lake. We're at 13 at the airport. 20 Castroville. 17 Tarpley, we do have wind chill values down in the single digits again. Feels like five. The wind is generally pretty light, but we've seen it pretty consistently anywhere from five to ten as far as that feels like temperature. Winter storm warnings are in effect and stay in effect because we have more wintry weather tonight. A freezing drizzle, freezing rain become likely in the, in the overnight hours, and that's just going to cause more problems, more issues on the roadways. In the meantime, we're going to struggle to get above freezing today. So we're thinking 22 by 10 o'clock, 26 noon time, 32, 33 this afternoon. With the sun, there will be some more melting, but just like this morning, it all refreezes and the roads are just in awful, awful shape. I mean, those road temperatures are down in the teens. Everything is frozen 
And it's sort of an eerie sight looking at Transguide, Samuel, with everything that's going on. Just when you're talking about uh, tomorrow too, and overnight and tomorrow night, because we're already seeing a rough situation. This is I-10 at Frio, and we've been telling you the past couple of days the upper decks of I-10 have been closed, and here's why. Uh, there is snow still on there. The cooler temperatures, the higher up you get. Uh, so that is uh, just an indication of uh, uh, why the upper ducts have been closed even uh, during the day yesterday when the highways uh, were sort of basically reopened because the road conditions improved. They are closed now. All highways should be considered closed even if they're not physically blocked. But you can see here on the lower level, uh, people are uh, traveling through. Hopefully those are just essential workers or people trying to get somewhere uh, safe just because of the cold temperatures and the lack of heat. Uh, anything indicator you see here is a marker of a closure. Uh, that includes out here at uh, 410 and uh, State Highway 51. We had major issues on 151 over the weekend. Another reason uh, why it's closed. Even though you're seeing traffic flow here, uh, just consider it closed. There's still icy conditions all over the place. We've been telling you about the winter driving tips. Again, very important with the ice on the highways. Drive the conditions, not the speed limit. Go slower than you think. If you think you're crawling, yes, uh, 25 or below. Avoid any sudden movements. If you slide, do not get out of your vehicle. Uh, if you're on an icy overpass or anywhere on the on the roadways because you're slick until help arrives. It may not have to be a first responder, but at least uh, someone to have second eyes uh, so that you can see uh, what's going on and also make sure you have those supplies uh, in your vehicles. Our Stephen Cavazos has been out and about uh, this morning. He's at the airport now and, and Stephen, I understand it was kind of a, a treacherous uh, getting there this morning. Hey, Samuel, that is the perfect word to describe our trip here to the airport. It did take us a little while to get here as the roads, as you mentioned, were pretty slick. Now, we did encounter some snow that has been iced over, obviously making it pretty dangerous for anyone. But while commuting, commuting is going to be a problem for some people, for people here at the San Antonio International Airport, the biggest problem they're going to have right now is going to be patience. Many people have been forced to stay here as the weather has forced more flight cancellations. And we actually met some here yesterday and a few people as far as Phoenix, Arizona, some as far as New Orleans, uh, New Orleans, telling us they had plans to be home right now. Uh, one man we met said he was visiting this Alamo City for his birthday, but he's telling us it's not going to be a celebration he's going to forget anytime soon. Uh, the best thing you can do right now, if you have a flight scheduled, maybe not today, maybe for the next few days from now, you're going to want to keep checking to FlySanAntonio.com because these cancellations, it's not clear how long they're going to be lasting, but no doubt people here at the airport are obviously just ready to get home, and their biggest problem right now is just going to be hanging on a little bit longer. Mark, Stephanie? All right, a lot of folks just now tuning in or maybe just joining our live streams. We have late breaking news this morning. Firefighters have been on the scene of a two alarm fire on San Antonio's north side. It broke out in an apartment complex in the 1200 block of Patricia Drive. That's near Blanco and West Avenue. Our Katrina Weber has been live there all morning and joins us now with the latest. Good morning, Katrina. Briefing from a battalion chief a few minutes ago and we're able to get some more information. She told us that the uh, damage here from this fire is pretty extensive. 12 out of the 16 units of this building have damage from the fire. Uh, they got called here around 4 o'clock this morning to the 1200 block of Patricia and found flames coming through the roof. That battalion chief was telling us that the flames seem to be uh, centered around a chimney of, on the building. and. Uh, so they are looking at a fireplace as the possible source of this fire, but again, too early to tell. What they did in the meantime is to get everyone out of this building that is affected. Uh, they were going to evacuate a building behind it, but we found out that they did not do that after all. Everyone from the building that was affected has been taken to the clubhouse. They're trying to sort things out now to see where those people will be able to stay. Because again, 12 out of 16 units have damage either from the fire or the water that was used to put out the fire. They did have to hit this building uh, from above with the aerial tr aerial trucks, the hoses on the uh, on those ladders uh, to get those flames out. But they said once they got those ladders in the air, they were able to knock down the fire pretty quickly. Again, no official word on the cause of this fire, but they are looking in the area near a fireplace as the possible source of it. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Tens of thousands, if not more, of San Antonians waking up without power again this morning. And most of the city is experiencing these power outages. And CPS says this will continue until those freezing temperatures let up. Our Sarah Costa is joining us live in the studio with the latest. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. And we've seen several comments on all of our social media platforms about the frustrations over this. Roughly two thirds of CPS energy grids will continue to have those rotating outages for the next 24 to 48 hours due to an unprecedented demand amid below freezing conditions, those conditions causing equipment failure. CPS Energy says these issues are expected pers to persist for the next few days. So let's take a look at the latest power outage map. Active outages 252 and this number continues to go up every half hour. Total customers affected 306,475. Now there is um, a higher demand for power across the state. It's been undercut by generation facilities going offline because of the coal. Now to help preserve the wider Texas power grid, about two thirds of the CPS energy system has been rotating between blackout periods with power going on and off. The other third is on circuits that contain critical infrastructure like hospitals. Paula Gold Williams, the CPS energy president and CEO said the that this could last several more days and that they are doing everything they can to relieve pressure. Now, here's what you can do at home. Set your thermostats to 68 degrees or lower. Turn off and unplug any unused or unnecessary appliances. Keep your blinds and windows closed at night to keep the heat in. And it's not just our viewing area experiencing these outages. Take a look at this map. This map shows how the state is being affected by the freezing temperatures, causing power loss. Areas in blue, they are not having outages, but it's those areas in orange and red. 30% of the counties in orange don't have power power, which includes Bear County. But take a look at those in red. For example, like Kerr County, that is at nearly 100% without power. The company says they're continuing to bring systems up, make repairs, and keeping customers informed on social media forums, emails, and phone calls. But Warren's make plans because it's not over yet, of course. Just stay with us here on GMSA and KSAT.com for the latest. Mark and Stephanie. All right. Thank you, Sarah. A lot of people dealing with those problems right now. Mm -hmm. And time now is 539 and 15 degrees for now. Well, if you missed it earlier, there are no planes going in or out of San Antonio International today. How you can check the status of any flight after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, very cold, 15 degrees. Uh, if you have to head out and bundle up, but again, those highways are closed. We're going to check in with Samuel King after the break. Just want to recap anyone with hopes flying in or out of San Antonio today, not going to happen. All flights in and out of San Antonio International have been canceled. The airport says you should contact your airline directly for flight status information and good luck rebooking. We're here. This is going to last for days and the ripple effect will also last for days. You can look at flights scheduled on FlySanAntonio.com. That is the best real time information on both departures and arrivals at our airports. And we were hearing not only a lot of people are stranded here, but there are a lot of people who can't come back back to, to San, San Antonio, Antonio stuck elsewhere. Yes, 543 still 15 degrees. Let's take a look outside with Trans Guide this morning. There is I-10 at Frio. Looks like it's pretty much iced over. All the major highways are closed again, uh, but even if you are traveling on those side streets, very icy out there. We're going to check in with Samuel King after the break. Five forty five. Welcome back to GMSA. And I was looking at the Trans Guide uh, camera over there. It's a uh, Loop 410 and Jackson Keller. Looks like is there a situation or is that just another emergency vehicle out there on the highway? I think just emergency vehicles uh, moving out and about. We've been uh, seeing that here uh, throughout uh, uh, the morning. Uh, traffic is starting to pick up a little bit, and that's uh, somewhat concerning. Uh, because of the icy conditions on the roadway. So we want uh, people to be careful. Really, the only people who should be out are uh, first responders or uh, essential uh, workers, maybe if you're a doctor or a nurse at one of the uh, medical centers. Uh, but we do also understand, and we've been hearing on social media about people who need to go somewhere uh, because they're without power and they've been without power and it's a dangerous situation. If you head out, just be careful, uh, take it easy, take it slow. But 
uh, officially all of the highways in the region are considered closed. Most major roadways should be considered closed here in San Antonio and the city streets, especially because uh, they're not really they're not going to be plowing uh, those streets. They might put some uh, treatment down some gravel later uh, once the temperatures warm up. But uh, at the moment, uh, uh, things remain dangerous and they do remain dangerous out here. It was uh, concerning to hear what uh, Sarah Costa was saying about uh, Kerr County basically being completely without power. We understand there are some shelters uh, in that area, but travel not advised. Uh, in the hill country either uh, guys so definitely a dangerous situation and unfortunately uh, it's not going to get much better here over the next uh, a couple of days so that's something we're going to have to watch out for yeah good advice Samuel. Yeah, and, and when we're talking about these weather records that we have these are going to be in place for a long time i mean this isn't an event that we're not soon going to forget and uh, you know we're still going with this we've still got more to go we're talking about the record lows a little bit, but there could also be some records as far as duration. We're talking about freezing, below freezing. We've been below freezing for about 80 hours now. There is a small chance, small chance that we get above freezing today, briefly. But if we don't, it uh, may be until tomorrow uh, morning, and that would put us at 108 hours below freezing, which would tie the record set back in 1951. The duration of this event is a dangerous one because we're also expecting more wintry weather tonight. Right now, 13 degrees outside. There are some clouds developing. I want to keep an eye on this. There also could be some patchy fog. Clouds are actually going to help us keep temperatures up just a little bit. Uh, and we have actually seen the temperature try to rise some. Now we're splitting hairs here because whether it's 13 or 15, cold is cold. But uh, any little bit at this point will take. Easterly winds at about 5 miles per hour. There is a little bit of a wind chill out there. 12 Bernie Stage, 19 Hondo, 17 in Tarpley, 13 Canyon Lake. We're in the teens everywhere you look, except for Carrizo Springs, where they're at 25. Austin is down to 9 this morning. And you look at the winds, wind chill is down to 5. That's what it feels like outside, so still dangerous cold here. Day planner shows that we'll get temperatures into the 20s. 10 o'clock, 22, 26 noontime. I think we're probably looking at partly cloudy skies. Yesterday, even though we didn't get above freezing, that sun melted everything. And that's why we're having ice this morning. The road's covered in ice. We'll see a similar scenario today where the sun, once it's out, will melt some stuff, but it refreezes again tomorrow morning. And on top of that, we're going to add some ice to it because we've got another system headed in our direction. We can see it here in water vapor, a little spin in the atmosphere. This will work its way down into Texas. And we'll see uh, some ice start to potentially accumulate tonight. So the roads are going to be horrible again tomorrow. Across the state, these numbers have been nothing short of incredible. It's down to zero in Abilene. Wichita Falls is at negative four right now. Tyler down to zero. Houston, 16. So you can understand why, well, at least we know that uh, power is, is being used across the state at this point because it's not just us, it's the entire state of Texas. So you can see that the power usage here is going to be huge. And so the, the blackouts continue, uh, the power outages. Forecast, as we look forward in time here, this is 6 o'clock, things are pretty quiet. But watch how uh, we start to see precipitation develop here around 10 o'clock. We start to see the potential for some freezing drizzle overnight. This is midnight, widespread freezing drizzle. And again, I think we could see some accumulation here with the ice. As we get into tomorrow morning, that moves away. But even Thursday morning, we get another little piece of energy in here. That could be more of a wintry mix, too. So we're talking freezing rain, maybe some snow Thursday morning. Winter storm warnings are now back in effect, though they've stayed in effect. But we're just extending them pretty much at this point. Uh, winter weather advisories out to the west, where we think ice will be uh, fewer and far between tomorrow morning. But anywhere in pink, this is where we're going to deal with this Freezing drizzle and freezing rain again tomorrow, or at least tonight, I should say. 60% chance of freezing drizzle tonight. Temperatures down to 28. We do get above freezing tomorrow. 48, mostly cloudy skies, and then we get a 40% chance for wintry mix. Wednesday night into Thursday morning. After that, things do get much, much better. But we're going to be looking back on the aftermath of all of this as we get into the weekend. There will be prolonged problems once we get into the weekend. Unbelievable situation and, and very slow signs of improvement 
Uh, to see this many winter storms back to back yes. to back with this cold air in place, just incredible. And so for such a wide swath of the country too. Yes, huge part, yeah. All right, we'll watch out for Thursday as well. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 551, 15 degrees. And we are still gathering the latest information on a large fire that broke out on the city's north side this morning. We're gonna get an update from our Katrina Weber later on GNSA. Hello, my name is Andrea Vocap Sanderson, San Antonio Poet Laureate, 2020 through 2023. As uh, recently Amanda Gorman said on television, I'm the ambassador for poetry in our local community. She could beat the nation, delectable creations of the highest vibration, body dialed up like a radio station. She ain't handing out samples, but brother stay waiting, brother stay waiting, brother stay waiting. It's my job to help communities celebrate the literature arts, get them writing, get them engrossed and involved in creativity through literacy. You develop your oratory skills and your writing skills. It helps you become a more confident human being. All hell the empress. You can taste the love. I started spoken word as small as six years old and I continued. Uh, 13 was the first time I read a poem in public. It was for a memorial service for a friend of mine that was murdered and that experience really impacted me seeing how people responded, seeing the, how poetry can be very healing and therapeutic. And I realized how music and, and uh, hip hop and poetry and all the rhythm and the rhyme and the cadence could really affect people even further. And I just fell in love with it. Notes of sweet melody run down my tongue. Can't get enough, tastes like my favorite song. Harmony palettes my senses undone. She tastes like music. Welcome back, everybody. Still a rough situation out there for most folks. CPS energy outages continuing throughout the day today. We don't know when this is going to come to an end. A look at the current outage map. Wow, we've got 254 outages. It doesn't seem like a lot, but that affects over 300,000 customers in the San Antonio metro area. CPS Energy told KSAT the demand for energy is continuing to exceed supply and the blackouts will continue. We're going to have more on this story throughout Good Morning San Antonio. In the meantime, be sure to check your family members and neighbors in this dangerously cold and truly historic weather. We are continuing our coverage of the winter weather in San Antonio. We'll have the updates you need to know, including school and business closures in the next hour of GMSA. And the roads technically are all still closed. We've seen some responders out there, maybe TxDOT crews. Some folks are trying to hit the roads, though. Uh, maybe they have to be at work this morning, but we've continued to see a log jam of truckers there using I-10 as sort of a rest stop by Callahan on the northwest side. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'd like to say good morning to you. I know it's a rough start for countless people right now tuning in on air and online, hopefully catching our live stream, even though widespread power outages. It is Tuesday, February 16th. Thank you for joining us. And along with those power outages, a lot of closures this morning. Let's start with the districts. All the big districts around San Antonio are closed today. North side, northeast, SAISD, south side will not hold classes in person or online today. Pre-K for SA will hold remote classes, but we understand food bank distributions have been postponed until further notice. If you have any questions about a specific district, please be sure to check your email or that school's website. We also have a list of closures on our website at kset.com, and you can see a scrolling list of closures on the bottom of your screen, and that will be happening throughout GMSA this morning. Well, we rely heavily on our traffic and our weather experts. Let's check in with the guys now get the very latest on this Tuesday. Uh, temperatures this morning, guys, dropped down to 13 a little bit earlier. So far, that has been our low temperature. Not as cold, not as cold in quotes, as yesterday. Uh, the averages are 67 and 44, so you can see how far below average we are at this point. The record was 16. We've already beat that, so two days in a row we have record lows here. Uh, record high minimum yesterday, and here's the numbers as they, here are the numbers as they stand right now. 14 at the airport, 12 Randolph, 12 Canyon Lake, 11 Kerrville, 
14 in Bandera. There is a little bit of a light breeze out there, so wind chill values are in the single digits. It feels like six at this hour. It feels like nine in Hondo, seven in Rock Springs. It is still bitterly dangerously cold out there, and that doesn't change for the next several hours. We may briefly get above freezing today, but uh, it's only going to be a, a small window here when that happens. Winter storm warnings now in effect. When well, they've been in effect, we're reissuing them now because we're going to get a chance for uh, some freezing drizzle again tonight. This is only going to make things worse. Uh, looks like we'll have a pretty decent shot at some ice accumulation. I-35 off to the east. We'll get into that forecast here in just a few minutes. In the meantime, here's what you can expect today. 22 by 10 o'clock, 26 noontime, up around 32, maybe 33 this afternoon. We can hope that we get above freezing for at least a little bit. Sun will be out, so there will be some melting just like yesterday. Again, we'll have much more on that forecast here in just a few minutes, but let's get over to Samuel now. And uh, those roads, I, it's, it's a virtual skating rink out there. Yeah, I mean, we are seeing traffic pick up a little bit, uh, Justin, just looking at the uh, trans guide here. We're seeing not only uh, first responders out there now, but we're also seeing uh, the, the public out there. So we want folks to be careful. We know some people have to move, might be potentially unsafe where you are because of all the power outages, but uh, we just want people to be careful uh, out here on the roads right now just because of those conditions that Justin was talking about. They may improve later today if we get above freezing and then overnight we're expecting that precipitation to come back in. Here's an overall arching look at the area. Any sort of indicator here indicates a closure or slippery conditions. Just assume that it's all slippery. Ice is important uh, to tell you how to uh, manage driving on ice. Drive to conditions, not the speed limit. Slow if you think you're going too slow. You probably are, and you might want to slow down even more, maybe all the way down to 25 miles per hour, especially uh, in, on roads that have not been treated as well. Avoid any sudden movements. If you slide, resist the urge to jerk the steering wheel or pump on the brakes, uh, subtle movements are important. Don't get out of your vehicle until help arrives or you, or you see it safe. You at least want some second eyes. It may not be a first responders, and the first responders have been very busy uh, too, so that, that's a, another thing that you should keep in mind. Uh, we've been telling uh, folks this throughout the past few days, but it's important. I know it's hard to get around to some of the stores, but hopefully you have some of these things in your house. If you have power at the moment, go ahead and plug in your, your, your cell phones or, or find the portable chargers. Gas tanks, half snacks, water in your vehicles. Here is uh, the state hotline as well. Uh, hope coming up, we're, we're hoping to hear from a TxDOT, a comprehensive update on the situation here. But in the meantime, stay off the roads. All of the major highways are considered closed until further notice. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Back to a late breaking story we've been tracking all morning long here on GMSA. Firefighters still at the scene of an apartment fire, a two alarm blaze. It's happening in the 1200 block of Patricia near Blanco and West Avenue. Our Katrina Weber has been there all morning and joins us live with the latest. Well, firefighters have begun paring down their presence here. A lot of the trucks that we saw here earlier have left. Just a few still remain here as they try to wrap things up. This is quite a different sight from what we saw earlier. In fact, I would like to give you a look at the video uh, so you can see what they found when they arrived around 4 o'clock this morning. They say that there were flames shooting out of the roof of one building here in the 1200 block of Patricia. Uh, they uh, had to evacuate the people in that building. They considered evacuating the building behind it, but ultimately decided not to do that. Uh, a total of 12 units in the affected building have damage either from the fire, the smoke, all the water that firefighters had to dump on it because they did have to put a lot of water uh, on this fire to make sure that it's out. No injuries reported, but again, a total of 12 units out of the 16 in this building affected. Those people now looking for a place to stay. Uh, firefighters did put them in the, in the clubhouse of this apartment complex in the meantime until they can figure out where they will go from here. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you. No flights coming in to San Antonio today and no one's leaving either. Let's go ahead and join our Stephen Cavazos, who is live outside the airport with the latest information for travelers. 
Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, it's definitely been a very unusual morning here at the San Antonio International Airport. I took a walk inside just a few moments ago, and much like we showed you during yesterday's noon newscast, it's virtually empty at this point. Now, while we were there, we did encounter several travelers yesterday who told us that they had planned on being home by now. But of course, this weather has them stranded here at the airport. And one man we actually met says that his flight did provide him a hotel and food voucher, but he says he has nowhere to go and nowhere to actually use that. He says he's stuck here at the airport and some that we actually saw just a little while ago have actually resorted to sleeping on the chairs there with a blanket over their head. Obviously, not a comfortable condition for them at this morning, but this is just one of the problems that many people are going to be encountering over the next few days. But the biggest problem right now is going to be having patience because it's still not clear how long these cancellations are going to last. And if you had any travel plans coming up over the next several days, it would be wise to check FlySanAntonio.com. They have a list of arrivals and departures there, but for now, it looks like no one's getting off the ground this morning. Mark Steph, back to you. David, thank you. It's been an extremely frustrating situation for so many people in our viewing area. Now for over 24 hours, thousands of people waking up yet again without power. And that situation will continue until those freezing temperatures let up. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with the latest from CPS Energy. Good morning. Good morning. And I just actually uh, spoke with the media representative with CPS Energy and they got back to me and they said at this time there are no updates other than those rotating outages will continue and they are doing their best to make those repairs to keep those systems up. CPS Energy says most customers are subject to these rotating outages as winter weather continues and the demand for power has surpassed the summer peak demand. Here is the latest power outage outage map from CPS Energy right now. The 261 active outages and again this total number of customers affected continues to go up every half hour throughout the morning 307,860 customers are being impacted right now and those also included in that number are being impacted by those rotating outages as well top CPS energy officials say the problems are due to equipment failure because of these below freezing temperatures and higher than normal utility demands up to four times higher than normal, putting a stress on the grid, not just here, but statewide, forcing them to do these rolling outages. The CEO and president of CPS Energy, Paula Gold Williams, said crews are working around the clock to address these issues. But she said this scenario, quote, is very complex. And without the rolling blackouts, the entire grid would be knocked offline, leaving them without power indefinitely, she said. Now, CPS Energy is asking customers to help out by setting your thermostats to 68 degrees or lower. Turn off and unplug any unused, unnecessary appliances. Keep your blinds and windows closed at night to keep the heat in. And it's not just our viewing area experiencing these outages. This is happening across the state, which is why they have to do these rolling outages. The map shows those areas that are with, that are causing that are without power. Now, the ones in blue are fine. They have power. It's the ones in yellow, red and orange that are experiencing these power issues. Orange Bear County is in orange. But take a look at those in red. Now, Bear County is in orange, which means 30 percent is without power. But the ones in red, like Kerr County, that is nearly at 100 percent without power. Now, about two thirds of the CPS energy system has been rotating between blackout periods with power going on and off and other. The other third is on circuits that contain critical infrastructure like hospitals. And like we just saw Stephen at the airport, the lights on. That's also considered in that critical area. I was going to ask you about that, Sarah, because if we have no flights in or out of the airport today and it's pretty much stranded, why can't they turn off some of the lights like at the parking garage, things like that? Yes. You just answered the question. Yeah, no, it's definitely they're part of that third that is in the critical where they have to keep the power on. They are considered mm -hmm. like a hospital. I know this is a lot of information to take in. You can find it all on KSAT.com. Right. Thank you, Thank you, you Sarah. For Thanks for doing some checking for us. We appreciate it right now. 610 15 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam at that cold 15 degrees. Uh, shot of the highways there. It looks like, of course, everything is still closed. The major highways, uh, those other roads, still icy, so not safe to be out there. Really, all we're seeing this morning is first responders on the road, but if you do have to head out, be careful. Welcome back, everybody. It is 6.30 on your Tuesday morning.
the roads still icy. I just looked at some of the highways. They still look closed, Samuel. The highway should be considered closed across the region. Here's a look at uh, Transkai DC talking all morning about these 18 wheelers uh, pulled over here. Some have been on the move, but mostly they've been parked there. Uh, I 10 at Frio, uh, 410 at San Pedro, still seeing uh, a, a few cars on the road. Obviously, much uh, less than we have in a normal morning, but that vehicle is going a little too fast uh, for conditions because we still have some icy patches here on the road. So that's something to uh, watch out for, including uh, 151 and 410. There's a closure here looking across uh, the region. You should cons consider any uh, highway here closed, uh, even if it's not indicated by a marker and even if it's not blocked by law enforcement. That's important as well. Out here to the east, uh, we're hearing there's icy conditions on 46, 123, 35. Out in the hill country as well, we've been having all of these issues. So uh, definitely stay off the roads if you can. Leave them for essential workers. And with more on the situation uh, now, we're joined by Jennifer Selge, who's with TechStot. She's been working hard over the weekend. And good morning, Jennifer. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. And so let's start with the situation in San Antonio and across uh, the region uh, right now. So crews have uh, continued monitoring the roadways 24 hours a day across the region. And what we're seeing right now this morning is very icy conditions. And because those icy conditions are dangerous and unpredictable, we have closed all of the major highways in our area. So we're asking everyone to stay home and stay off the roads. Um, if you have to travel, please slow down and use extreme caution. Um, another thing that we wanna stress is do not drive around the barricades that have the highways closed and please do not move them. So if we're seeing some of the uh, 18 wheelers there parked or those may, people might be passing through and may not realize the situation there because we've seen that the past uh, few mornings there. Right, it, um, as you know, San Antonio is a major corridor through the state and most of those 18 wheelers are probably passing through during their deliveries. And so uh, you mentioned uh, you're monitoring the situation. How are you handling sort of treating uh, the roads uh, overnight and throughout the day? Right, our crews, um, we have about 40 crews out every day. Uh, right now they're working to de-ice the roads and highways. And then later on this at, or later on today, we'll be working to prepare for tonight's uh, freezing rain and we'll be pre-treating roads with brine and our focus will be on the frontage road since all highways are closed. And you, you sort of answered my next question because as Justin's about to tell everyone, we're expecting more winter weather over the next couple of days. Uh, uh, tell us more about how you're, you're planning for that and what people should do in that situation. Right, well, we're, we're preparing as, as fast and safely as we can. The highways will remain closed. Um, so we'll continue to monitor that, de-ice and then brine and prepare for the freezing rain that's coming tonight. All right, that's Jennifer Serral. She is with TechStot. Thank you uh, so much for, for joining us uh, this morning. We really appreciate it, and we'll probably be checking in with you throughout the next uh, couple of days like we have been. And, and Justin, uh, she, she said it there, mm -hmm. consider the highways closed because we're still going to have these uh, wintry weather conditions over the next couple of days. Pretty astounding to think we could get more freezing rain tonight. And, you know, we, we should just say it. We're not used to this kind of weather right, in South exactly. Texas. We don't mm -hmm. typically drive on this, but... We're going to have several days here of icy roads, and as you just heard, not a good situation. A lot of roads closed, not a surprise, because you look at the road temperature, and this is a product on our radar where we can look at road temperatures. They're down into the teens, 20-degree uh, road temperature there on 35 as you get down towards Divine. doesn't matter where you go. The roads are below freezing. There is ice on all of these roads. Yesterday, we had good sun. It melted some of that snow. You had liquid across the roads, and then it just... It's it's frozen now. It, it refreezes overnight. Uh, as we look outside right now, 14 degrees at the airport, 17 at Kelly, 12 at Randolph. Temperatures actually rising just a little bit, and I think that's because we are getting some cloud cover out there. Looking at some of the observations, clouds trying to build in. That'll help some, but look, it's still bitterly cold. And those without power, this is not a good situation at all. 12 Bernie Stage, 12 Randolph, 19 in Hondo, 16 in Tarpley. It is very, very cold out there. And if you're without power, your home is going to be very, very cold. Uh, we'll zoom out some 18 in Rock Springs, 12 in Junction, 8 right now in Austin. You look at the wind chill down to 6. That's what it feels like. Single digit wind chills. 
and it's not just us. This is the entire state dealing with this really, really cold air. Forecast for today, we will get into the 20s. The sun will be out today, so that's good, I suppose. Uh, but that, of course, will melt, and then we'll see. Uh, it will melt things, and it will refreeze again tonight. We think we'll get up to around 32, 33 for a high. The average high, by the way, is 67, so we're just way below average. Uh, as we look at the satellite picture, Texas is quiet for now, but downstream, we have another storm system that is already starting to produce energy across parts of New Mexico. That's going to swing through Texas tonight, and that is what's going to give us some freezing drizzle and freezing rain during the overnight hours, adding insult to injury. The numbers across the state, just incredible. I continue to be in awe of these numbers. Negative three Wichita Falls, zero in Tyler. It's one right now in Dallas. They could go below freezing briefly this morning. 10 in San Angelo, 20 right now in Corpus Christi. As we look at the forecast, Again, quiet today. This is around 6 o'clock, but clouds build in tonight, and here we go. Here's our next round. I know you see a lot of blue here. I think it's probably less snow, more ice, and that's not good. We'd rather have snow because it's a little easier to drive in. But this is probably going to be in the form of freezing rain. Places like the Hill Country, which have already had ice accumulations over the last week, we're going to add to that. If you're at I-35 and points off to the east, you can expect some ice accumulation tonight. That will clear out tomorrow morning. Wednesday looks pretty quiet, but guess what? We get another round, potentially Thursday morning. Temperatures will be borderline here. This shows a rain-snow mix across San Antonio. I think we'll have a wintry mix, maybe some freezing rain, some sleet and snow, all modes of precipitation with this one. After this, finally, I think we're done with sort of the wintry weather, and we'll get temperatures back to near average by the weekend. In the meantime, winter weather alerts are back in place. Winter storm warnings have been reissued for our next round of wintry weather. And you can see kind of the corridor here where we think that wintry weather will occur. If you're out west in this blue color winter weather advisory, probably not as much ice tonight, but still even a little bit can cause some issues. So be careful across the board here. Extended forecast, 40 or 60 percent chance of freezing drizzle tonight. 48 tomorrow. We do go above freezing on Wednesday. We should note that 40 percent chance of a wintry mix into Thursday morning. 42 on Thursday. We will still have chilly overnight lows. Even into Friday morning, we're down to 26. But by the weekend, things really do moderate. And from there, we'll be able to kind of look back and see what the damage is. But I imagine there's going to be weeks and weeks of sort of recovering from right. this. From pipes to the outages we faced. You name it. Uh, even plants. I know that's not oh, a that's concern true. right now, that's but true. people's yards. I mean, it's across the board. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Justin. You, Justin. Yeah. 621, 15 degrees. And more winter weather coverage coming up after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Millions of people are saying yes to Allegra, including the experts. It's the number one allergist recommended brand for non-drowsy relief. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin, so you can get going first thing. It lasts up to six times longer than Benadryl, giving you relief through the late shift. And unlike Zyrtec, Allegra is non-drowsy for all your non-stop adventures. Join the millions saying yes to Allegra. And for allergy relief with a powerful decongestant, find Allegra D behind the pharmacy counter. Brushing only reaches 25% of your mouth. Listerine cleans virtually 100%, helping to prevent gum disease and bad breath. Never settle for 25%. Always go for 100. Bring out the bold. I'm made to move, but these days, I'm not getting out as much as I'd like to. That's why I take OsteoBiflex. It helps with occasional joint stiffness while it nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. OsteoBiflex, because I'm made to move. 626, the San Antonio Zoo is looking for donations for an animal sanctuary in dire need and rodeo events rescheduled. Our Erica Hernandez joining us live from her home with details on these stories and others on KSET.com. Good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Well, the San Antonio Zoo yesterday afternoon reaching out to the community for help for the primarily... Oh, wait, I lost my... my the primary primates animal sanctuary. Sorry guys, I lost my... my 
teleprompter there. The nonprofit sanctuary is located in Leon Springs and has had power outages, which has had devastating effects on the animals in its care. The sanctuary is looking for donations that include blankets, flashlights, propane tanks, generators, heaters, and dog and cat carriers. Officials are asking for donations to be brought to 26099 Dole Knife Trail, only if it's safe for drivers to do so. The zoo is currently providing temporarily animal housing and emergency vet care for some of the primary primarily primate animals. Now moving on to the stock show and rodeo, they are still not having events, but have released the new rescheduling events that have been canceled. The PRCA rodeo with Randall King that was set for yesterday has been rescheduled for Sunday, February 21st at 4 p.m. Today's rodeo has been rescheduled for February 20th at 1 p.m. and will be followed by entertainment. And the ranch rodeo with Aaron Watson that was scheduled for Sunday the 21st has been rescheduled to Sunday the 28th. Two events have been canceled altogether, which was the T.G. Shepherd concert and the Chaviada that was previously set for February 28th. Now, we have this story up right now on our website with all the latest updates, including full lists of closed businesses and schools. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Erica. Time now is 627 and 15 degrees for now. San Antonio firefighters still on the scene of a major fire on the north side. We'll get the latest from our Katrina Weber in the next half hour. And taking a look outside with Transguide there this morning, there's a look at Loop 410 and Fredericksburg Road. You can still see some of that leftover ice there. Uh, looks like there's an accident there. We're going to check in with Samuel King later in the newscast. And good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is February 16th. We know a whole bunch of folks are still without power, and you may be joining us via the KSAT app to watch our live streams. We're going to get you updated on everything coming up. But first, let's go ahead and check on all those closures, probably some even caused by the power outages. That's right. More schools are closed this morning. North side, northeast, San Antonio, and south side will not hold classes or do anything remotely today. Pre-K for SA will hold remote classes, but uh, we understand the food bank has had to postpone all food distributions until further notice. If you have any questions about a specific district, please be sure to check your email or the school's website. We also have a list of closures on our website at kset.com, and you can see a scrolling list of closures on the bottom of your screen. This is throughout GMSA. Well, the roads are still icy. We're gonna talk to Samuel King coming up, but I think we're beginning with weather. Yes, Mark, yes. it's so tough this morning if you don't have power with these temperatures. Yesterday, if you remember, we got down to nine. This morning so far, 13 is our low. We're sitting at 14 at this hour, 17 Port SA, 14 Bandera, and you're at 13 in Canyon Lake. Some of these places not reporting ice wreaking havoc on some of these reporting sites. It's just been a long term winter weather event here that's going to be one for the record books i mean it really is wind chill values right now at six that's what it feels like outside when you factor in that light breeze there's not much of a breeze but it is there we've also got some cloud cover trying to move in they can help us a little bit with temperatures but not a lot cold is cold winter storm warnings now back in effect for the area that includes san antonio basically out to the north and east i-35 i-37 off to the east this is where we're expecting the potential for more freezing drizzle and freezing rain tonight. These areas shaded in purple, a little bit less than wave ice, but it's still possible. This is going to be another bad situation tonight, especially when we're talking about the roads because you're just adding on ice on top of ice. Here's the forecast. We do think it's possible we could get above freezing today. Partly cloudy skies, 32, 33 this afternoon. Easterly winds five to 10 miles per hour. So that'll cause some melting, but everything refreezes tonight. And as I mentioned, there is that potential for um, uh, for some uh, wintry weather tonight, freezing drizzle, freezing rain, and that's why those warnings are in effect. We're going to talk much more about that. We're going to walk you through the forecast as far as that's concerned and also a warm-up. There is a warm-up, I promise, as we get towards the weekend. But this scene, Samuel, is just, it's hard to fathom that this is South Texas. Right, uh, nothing uh, on the highway here, and we do have a crash, Justin. This is uh, at 410 at Fredericksburg Road. This is uh, the frontage road at 410. Uh, the, the lights there in the distance, uh, people are kind of moving uh, slow, so it almost looks in slow motion. So that's good if you're going to be out, and you shouldn't be, but if you are an essential worker or someone who needs to get to safety, take it slowly. But we believe the crash is here on Fredericksburg uh, Road. Thankfully, this is the first one we've seen along the Transguide cameras uh, this morning, but uh, that, that's something to uh, keep in mind. Again, this is a 
Fredericksburg Road at 410. You know that gets elevated there. Uh, this is one of the areas that have been listed as closed. Uh, so again, this just underscores the sort of uh, dangers uh, out there when it comes to the crashes. We heard from TxDOT just a little bit ago, and they're telling us uh, consider all of the major highways closed until further notice, and it doesn't sound like they're going to reopen them anytime soon. They said they're going to focus on uh, the frontage roads uh, there when it comes to treating uh, because they want people off of the highways. We don't want some of the situations we had in Kerrville, the situations we had uh, up in Fort Worth uh, a few days ago where we had uh, uh, fatal crashes up there, pileups. Uh, they want people off of the highways, roads, are dangerous. We understand though that there are people who need to be out. This is 1604, this is I-10, this is 281. We've been showing uh, this area because uh, we, we've had uh, ice reports up here for several days. Drive to the conditions, not the speed limit. That's uh, one key thing. And if you're in a crash, and let's say you're on one of those uh, frontage roads or an overpass, don't get out of your vehicle until help arrives so you can have a second eye there. We, again, we don't want people getting hurt unnecessarily. And we don't want really people out because the first responders have been busy over the past couple of days. Someone else who's been busy this morning is our Stephen Cavazos. He's been traveling around the region, checking the road conditions. How do things look where you are, Stephen? Hey, good morning, Samuel. We're, we're here at a 410 East near Jones and Maltzburg. I'm going to turn the camera over really quickly. We had a few cars up ahead of us and we were actually heading west before we took a, a, a little turnaround. We've been encountering several roadblocks along the way. And in fact, there were a few cars that were ahead of us. Two of those cars actually had some trouble making their way up that incline uh, at 410. Now, we've encountered some ice ourselves that made it difficult for us to really accelerate forward. We're taking it very slow, as we've told you earlier in the show, uh, probably about maybe no more than 20 miles per hour. But while we've been out driving around, we have also spotted a few tech stock crews. I know you've been mentioning that a little while ago, but many have been making their way out possibly to treat the roads. But, you know, we've encountered a lot of roadblocks this morning. And as you mentioned, the, many of these major highways are still closed off right now. We're just kind of looping around to find out you know, what's really uh, the best path if you have to, to make your way out. But, you know, obviously the best route, the best decision if you can make is just to stay home right now. A lot of these highways are going to be closed for an unknown or extended period of time. But uh, this is uh, pretty dark as well. In fact, as we were driving out, we saw that there was a few stoplights that had also uh, been turned off. So obviously making it uh, giving it that extra layer of danger for drivers out this morning. But of course, uh, you can stay updated with us at ksat.com. We're going to continue to drive around just to monitor the areas. But of course, keep safety in mind and take it slow this morning. Mark Stephanie. And you guys just turned from 410 on. It looks like the 281 frontage there right by that shopping center. And we see roads are dry, but we also saw what looked like black ice. You guys just passed over a patch. Please be careful, Stephen. Thank you. Firefighters have been on the scene of a huge apartment fire all morning long. It's something we've been covering right here on GMSA. It's been happening in the 1200 block of Patricia. That's up near Blanco and West Avenue. Our Katrina Weber has been live there all morning and joins us now with another update. Well, good morning, Stephanie. Uh, the fire that had been getting uh, the attention of firefighters is now out, but their uh, eyes are now going to be on a fireplace. They told me that that is the area they were looking at as the possible source of this apartment fire. I want to go ahead and show you the video right away. Uh, it broke out around four o'clock this morning. Firefighters say that there were flames shooting from the roof of one building here at this apartment complex in the 1200 block of Patricia. They had to bring in two ladder trucks. They were able to get that water poured on it from above. And they say once they did that, they knocked that fire down rather quickly. 12 units of the 16 in this one building have damage either from the fire, the smoke or the water that they had to pour on it. They had to evacuate the whole building. They were at one point looking at evacuating the building behind it, but they ended up not doing that. The people who were evacuated from the building with the fire went to the clubhouse at this apartment complex to get out of the cold and firefighters say that they would sort things out from there to try to figure out what will happen to them next. They uh, did say that the fire seemed to be centered around a chimney and again they were going to look at the fireplace as the possible source of this fire but we have not heard from them yet whether that in fact was the cause. Reporting live on the north side Katrina Weber KSAT 12 News. Thank you Katrina.
We have seen several comments on all of our social media platforms about the frustrations over this. So many people across our viewing area have been completely without power for over 24 hours. Now, some folks are more than frustrated. They're downright angry. CPS Energy started those rotating power outages just early yesterday around 1 a.m. Sarah Coast is right here in the studio with more. Sarah, can you explain the reasoning behind these rotating outages? Yeah, CPS Energy says it's a pretty it's pretty important to have those rotating outages. It's because it's a statewide problem. A higher demand for power has been undercut by power generation facilities going offline because of this extremely cold weather and to help preserve the wider Texas power grid. About two thirds of the CPS energy system has been rotating between blackout periods with power going on and off. The other third is on circuits that contain critical infrastructure like hospitals and the airport. But let's take a look at the latest outage map here. Right now, 268 active outages, and this number has risen throughout the morning of the total number of customers affected 307,864. And of course, these numbers include those rotating outages. Now, Paula Gold Williams, a CPS Energy president and CEO, said this could last several more days and that they are doing everything they can to relieve pressure. She said if they didn't do these rotating outages, the whole system can go out indefinitely. So here's what we can do at home to do your part. Set your thermostats at 68 degrees or lower. Turn off and unplug any unused or unnecessary appliances. Keep your blinds and windows closed at night to keep the heat in. San Antonio CPS Energy customers say they're worried about the elderly and the sick neighbors who are without power during these ongoing rotating outages happening across the state. CPS Energy says the energy demand has been up to four times higher than expected. CPS Energy is reaching out to its customers via social media platforms, calls and emails. The utility company says it is also contacting their known elderly and sick who are on their list. Now, the company says they're continuing to bring systems up to make those repairs and keeping customers informed on all of their platforms. But they warn, make plans because it's not over yet. Of course, you can keep updated here on air and online at KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie. All right, thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this many power outages in my over 20 years at KSAT 12. For this long a period No, of time. not for this long. And a lot of folks are without power, so, and your phones may have died, may not be able to get in and watch, you know, check out our website or anything like that. Assume that everything is closed and it's going to be like this for the long haul. Yes, it's been a struggle for a lot of families out there. 641, 15 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam, and there the conditions continue. Still icy on those roadways, uh, and still the major highways closed. A lot to deal with this morning. And power outages, too. Yes. That's usually lit up all the way around, and we see uh, outages right there at 410 and I 10. And welcome back. It is 644. A lot of people still dealing with outages and also still dealing with icy conditions on the roadways. That's right. Authorities have urged everybody to stay off the roads, but uh, some folks do have to work. The first responders are out there. Some truckers are stuck. Oh, it's just a big old party, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the truckers still. We've been talking about this all morning, uh, Mark and Stephanie. Uh, and you heard from Texod, if you were with us uh, uh, about a half hour ago, she was explaining that many of these people are just passing through. They're making their deliveries. We still need to get supplies uh, around the uh, the country, basically, and across Texas. And uh, But with these highway conditions, we often see these 18-wheelers pulled over, and that's what's happening. But some of them, uh, as the sun is starting to come up, have been on the move. Let's take a look over at 410 and Fredericksburg Road. We had a crash there uh, reported uh, just a short time ago, and you can kind of see there in the distance uh, the lights. Uh, this is one of those areas that's concerning, uh, even though it's a frontage road and not the highway, uh, because it, it is elevated, so you get some slick spots, and we've seen people sometimes struggle to get up there. Uh, but a crash where we heard was on Fredericksburg. Again, this is a tricky area because of uh, the elevation, so watch out uh, for that. Uh, here's a closer look at the area uh, on uh, the map. Uh, the traffic flow kind of ignored that. Uh, in a sense, uh, you shouldn't be on the roads. Uh, but it does indicate that there is some traffic uh, out there, uh, probably more than uh, first responders should like. Again, and we also have this crash here at Zarzamore and, and on Laredo Street. We often don't uh, show some of these if they're not really impacting traffic. But just to point out uh, that on the city streets, 
There's a lot of power outages, a lot of traffic signals are out there. Sarah Costa is telling me when she uh, had was coming in, she saw one traffic signal that was actually working. So treat those intersections as four way stops. We don't want people uh, to get caught in any sort of crash or, or situation uh, today. And, and Justin, uh, when you're looking here at this map, I, I've just never seen anything like this for days on end when it comes to uh, having so many crashes, so many icy conditions on the roads and, and it's not going to get better or we say it's going to get worse before it gets better at the end of the week. Yeah, and something that stands out to me, uh, Samuel, is when we started this event, we said bridges and overpasses, right? right. That's the things we're going to ice. Now we're talking every street out there. Right. right. Surface right. roads are frozen. There is mm -hmm. ice on those. So it's just it's widespread. This is a long duration event. This is uh, something interesting. I just saw this. The uh, extreme low yesterday morning or this morning, I should say, across the country, negative 46 in Eli, Minnesota. The record high yesterday was 91 in Miami. Miami is dealing with temperatures in the 90s, and there has been severe weather out ahead of this system. We're closer to the Minnesota temperature here in South Texas with temperatures very, very chilly. I mentioned the dur duration here. We're at about 80 hours now below freezing straight. It is possible for a brief time this afternoon, we could jump above freezing. If we don't, and we make it all the way into Wednesday morning, we would go around 108 hours, which would tie the record for the longest duration below freezing here in San Antonio, set back in 1951. As we go outside, boy, that is a sight to see. Uh, still snow and ice uh, left over on uh, these roads. And we've got some cloud cover building in, so it has gone mostly cloudy. That's going to help us a little bit with temperatures. And I know it doesn't seem like it because it's 14, but we had the potential to go down into the single digits this morning. So that's kind of the difference there. Northeasterly winds at about five miles per hour. 14 Bandera, 12 Bernie Stage, 12 at Canyon Lake, 12 at Randolph. And you zoom out some uh, 23 Carrizo Springs. Hard to believe that in Carrizo Springs is 23. That is the warm spot this morning. Uh, as we look at wind chill values, they've been consistently in the single digits. Feels like six outside. The wind is pretty light, but any little bit of wind is going to make it feel a whole lot colder. Forecast for today, we're going to update this and put a little more cloud cover because we are seeing some of those morning clouds here to start. But I think partly cloudy as we get into the afternoon. Temperatures get up around 32, 33 for a high today. Easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And to give you some perspective, our average high for this date is 67. So you can see how far below average we are, how extreme this event really is. And as we look at the big picture, we're in sort of a lull right now. That big storm system that brought us the snow has pushed all the way up into New England. But we're watching what's downstream. A little piece of energy here. You can see the spin on the water vapor. That's going to swing into Texas and give us some freezing drizzle, freezing rain tonight. Not what we need whatsoever, but that's what we're going to get, it looks like. And you look at the numbers across the state, zero in Abilene, negative three in Wichita Falls, one in Dallas, zero in Tyler. Save this map in your mind because we're not going to see this again for a long, long time. But you can see why the power usage is, is a problem because it's not just us. It is a large portion, actually all the state of Texas, uh, dealing with these very, very, very cold temperatures. Here's what the forecast looks like. As we get into this afternoon, I still think we're looking at partly cloudy skies, but tonight precipitation moves in. That piece of energy looks like freezing rain and freezing drizzle. Just looking at the atmospheric profiles here, I think it's going to be ice, and that is problematic. The roads are just going to get worse. This moves out tomorrow morning. Wednesday is pretty quiet. We do jump above freezing, but Thursday morning, we get another little piece of energy in here. Timing is awful because that's when temperatures fall right back down below freezing, and here we go again. Wintry mix possible rain, freezing rain, maybe some snow and sleet mixed in there too. After this though, we are done with the wintry weather. The winter storm warnings extend from San Antonio up to Dallas. They're going to get a ton of snow out of this next system in Dallas. So that's another problem up there. For us, these winter storm warnings are going to go Tuesday night into Thursday morning to cover both the event tonight and also Thursday morning. Here's a look at the forecast. 60% chance of freezing drizzle. And by the way, that's going to be mainly I-35 east. That's where we could see some accumulations of a tenth of an inch, maybe even up to a quarter of an inch of ice east of I-35. If you're west of that, ice accumulations will be much lower. Then as we get into Thursday morning, 40% chance of a wintry mix. Temperatures up around 42 on Thursday, 50 Friday. We're back into the 60s this weekend. And then as we've been saying, that's when we'll be able to kind of look back and retrospectively 
see what, what all has happened here with this uh, historic system. Yes, but it'll be a relief to at least be in the 60s this yes. weekend. Yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, Justin. You, Justin. Yeah. 651, 15 degrees. Let's take a look outside with Transguide. Again, you can see those icy roads there to look at Loop 410 at Evers, an emergency vehicle there off the side of the road. And there is US 281 at Almost. We'll be right back. Welcome back, five till seven. Still have some situations out here on the roads. It looks like the situation's improving here at 410 at Fredericksburg. We did have a crash reported there, but you're no longer seeing the emergency vehicles. We still have our friends, the uh, 18 wheelers uh, parked here on uh, uh, I-10 at Callahan. Watch out, dangerous conditions there. And finally, uh, busy here around 410 at San Pedro. Uh, so watch out for that. Don't really want you to get in too much trouble uh, over there. Remember, consider any highway including I-10, 410, 1604, uh, to be closed right now. And Justin, this situation is not going to improve uh, anytime soon. No, we're going to continue to see some of that black ice as we go into the next few days. Uh, temperatures, uh, 22, 10 o'clock, 26, noontime, 32, 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 33, so maybe briefly above freezing this afternoon, but uh, not for long. And we see more wintry weather tonight. 60% chance of freezing drizzle, some freezing rain. We could see some accumulations in spots, especially east of I-35. That's problematic. And then another chance of a wintry mix Thursday morning, if you can believe that. Winter storm warnings in effect Tuesday night through Thursday morning. We will get above freezing Wednesday, but also more so by the end of the week into the weekend. All right, folks, we know it's rough, but we are here for you here at KSAT 12. Yes, yeah, still a lot to look out for. We'll see you back here at 9.